Stories have been a favorite way through which values, life lessons, and teachings have always been shared by our elders, masters, and mentor. One such story is to describe a shloka from Viveka Chudamani by Adi Shankaracharya, portraying the spiritual journey and the cornerstones we pass through in this process. Let us watch this beautiful story on our screens here. Unearthing the treasure within. During the Sanya centenary year of beloved Papa, a year-long in-depth study was undertaken on Papa's first book, In Quest of God, from 27th December 2021 to this year, 2022. Sadhagas should know that the purpose of the in-depth study of in-depth study of Beloved Papa's in quest of God is to experience the presence of the indwelling and all-pervading reality Ram. Only by delving deep into the text through regular and persistent efforts to contemplate, reflect and meditate on the theme contained therein, this can be achieved. Certainly not by merely reading the text at the surface level. In Vivek Chudamani reminds us of the salient factor. While exploring the exceptional journey of self-discovery, a profound shloka, shloka number 65, from Vivek Chudamani offered us a unique understanding of this in-depth study of in quest of God. Parampuja Adi Shankara's Vivek Chudamani is undoubtedly a masterpiece of Advaita philosophy and perhaps his most famous non commentarial work that expounds Vedanta in all its glory and grandeur. The slogan reads Aptoktim Khananam Tatho Perishila Dukkarshanam Svikritim Nikshepa Samkshepate Nahibahi Shabdaistu Nirgachati Tadvad Brahma Vidopadesha Manana Dhyanadi Vir Labhyade Maya Karya Tirohitam Swamamalam Tatvam Naduryukti Vihi Meaning is As a treasure hidden underground requires for its extraction, competent instruction, first thing. Then, followed by excavation and removal of stones and other things lying about it. And finally, grasping, but never comes out by merely being called out by name. Similarly, the transparent truth of the self, the indwelling reality, which is hidden by Maya and its effects, is to be attained through the instruction of a knower of Brahman, followed by reflection, meditation, and so forth, but not through perverted arguments. To better understand the purport of the shloga, we remember. Puja Swami Chinmayanandaji used to narrate a story of two families who were living in the same neighborhood. Two families were living in the same neighborhood till it's midnight, preferably early in the morning. And the whole neighborhood is asleep. Gather all necessary tools for excavation. Go to the room remove the loose tile and start digging down. Uncle added, there will be plenty of debris. 
Don't throw them around. Keep them on a side. Make sure that there is no publicity for this whole exercise. It may take few nights to finish digging. Never get dejected or dispirited. Have faith in the words of your father. As you keep digging, one day you will hear the sound of your digging tool hitting on a metalling thing. It would be a copper vessel. Don't damage it. Lift it up. Remove the cover on the top. Inside you will find the treasure your father had saved. This will be enough to take care a few generations of you. Believing in his instructions, they went back to their house and did exactly how they were instructed, perseveringly, without fail. They ne never doubted his words. They were never complacent in following the instructions. Finally, they found the treasure at the end of a long and hard search. This story is a fictionalized version of our spiritual journey. On a deeper reflection of the story, you may find five phases there. First is struggle, then quest, followed by faith, and then practice, and finally self-discovery. First is struggle. In this story, the family that loses their head is facing a serious setback in their life. Life is full of ups and downs, pleasure and pain and success and failures. Often expectation is one thing, but reality is something else. Nobody's life is a bed of roses from the beginning to the end. A person becomes a seeker when he realizes that nothing is eternal in his life and everything that he was holding dear is ephemeral. Next is quest. When the heartbroken family came to know that they were in deep trouble and utterly helpless, they went to the person whom they deeply trusted and whose wisdom they unconditionally believed. When a seeker realizes that he needs guidance on the direction of his spiritual journey by divine providence, a guru, personal or impersonal, arrives to direct him towards the ultimate goal. The quest begins when we are humble enough to admit that where we are now is nowhere near where we need to reach. Faith. In this story, the grieving family has full faith in their advisor and faithfully followed his instructions. In life, finding one's guru is only a beginning not an end in itself. One has to have unconditional faith in his wisdom and faithfully follow his instructions. It is worth remembering that what we see as a butterfly is the culmination of a transformative journey of a caterpillar. The smooth pebbles we see at the seashore started their journey as rough-edged rock pieces. Practice. Having received the instructions, the grieving family, without any doubt or trepidation, acts on his words in right earnest. Every aspirant has to keep this in mind. The Guru is a guide to the destination, not the destination in itself. Having found the Guru is not enough, one has to practice his precepts unfailingly. Finding a signpost is important, but it is even more important to walk in the direction with faith, conviction and commitment. Self-discovery. If we decide to follow our Guru's message, we will have to dig deep into our inner resources. As we go deeper, we will find that the divine treasure we are searching is already within us. From the very beginning, we have been searching outside all over, like the musk deer in the Upanishad story, frantically searching for the divine aroma. 
every drop in the ocean contains the trace of salinity every one of us contains the essence of divinity in birat papa's words be conscious always that the god that we you pray to is within you and everywhere about you his protection and grace are there ever for you be always aware that he is guiding you from within